this black gown doesn't make me blush, that introduction surely will. I extend to you a special welcome as the newest members of the Pomona College Pride. As we pawn over your arrival, much like any family pawns over a new addition, I ask you not to let hubris cloud your true calling as a sage. For although your family, your friends, the admissions staff, and now even Forbes may laud your innumerable accomplishments, they are by no means the sole reason for your presence here. You are not here solely on the laurels of your academic portfolio. We turn away classes of value coins, they can tell you over that. <laughs> Nor are you here because you won a National Science Award, made an all-state team, created your own company, or even created your own charity. If you did those things, congratulations, join the club. All right. <laughs> These endeavors, in and of themselves, do not make you special. They do not make you a sachem. Rather, you are here because someone saw within you the potential to fulfill the Pomona promise. That is a promise coursing through the veins of all loyal Pomona affiliate. The Pomona promise is a commitment to couple uncommon talents with exceptional compassion. It reflects a truism that in this world, knowledge entails equal parts empowerment, but also conscription. And conscript you must, for now more than ever, our country needs leaders with this rare combination. We face historic wealth inequalities that threaten our democratic ethos and the future of our economic stability. Class can challenge us to walk humbly. Tensions between folks of all stripes have reached new heights as recent court rulings, demonstrations, and policy decisions have shown us that Americans still struggle to dismantle the color veil. Race can challenge us to do justice. Every day, women across this country seem to sustain attacks on their freedom over already objectified bodies. Gender can challenge us to love mercy. Antiquated behavior tropes for particular bodies still constrain individual agency and true freedom of expression. Sexuality can challenge us to entertain fraternal ascension. And these are the issues just covered in my intro class, ladies and gentlemen. <laughs> <laughs> it matter not whether you sit behind me with a PhD or before me with a high school degree, no one person has the panacea to all of our problems. I would venture to say that one does not exist, for even the purest intent behind principled action can still lead to problematic outcomes. Instead, the best for which you can strive is to earnestly cultivate and pursue your uncommon talent with a heart tempered with exceptional compassion. Now that's not to say that we all need to go off, graduate, and join the Peace Corps. For those of you who do, more power to you, God bless you. Rather, it's an acknowledgement that the Pomona promise is just as easily fulfilled in the corridors of Sigru as it is in the classrooms of TFA. You can be a banker or a basket weaver, a consultant or a coach, or anything in between, and still remain loyal to our promise. Still remain loyal to the dream of a land that never has been yet and yet must be. That is to say that each one of you sachems has a particular role to occupy in curbing tomorrow's problems. Our collective creed requires only that you give your time, talents, and energy to the best of your abilities with a heart temper with considerable compassion. All around us, we can see the Pomona Promise at play in numerous ways. We can see the Pomona Promise at play in the light of our late and great trustee, John Payton, 
Following the footsteps of Charles Hamilton Houston and Thurgood Marshall, John Payton devoted his life to the pursuit of justice and substantive equality through law. We can see the promise at play in the life of a staff member named Will, who worked full time, yet found time in his heart to volunteer as a youth sports coach to mentor at risk youth. We can see the promise at play in the life of a partner at a prominent law firm when he takes time away from his busy schedule to show faith in his students' potential. We can see the promise at play in the works of an alum named Alex, who created a company that donates all its chairs, chair, uh, profits to charity. Tap for a cause, it's a great place. Or even further, we can feel the promoted promise at play. When a wily old professor and a faithful dean serve as surrogate, student, surrogate fathers to a student in need. Friends, I implore you to ask yourself how you're honoring the promoted promise. The range of stories I shared shows that you need not devote your life to the monastery to uphold our covenant. Indeed, the Pomona promise is needed as much in Wall Street as it is in Main Street, for problems as extensive and expansive as ours require problem solvers in equally extensive set of sectors. Simply ask yourself a few questions. What have I accomplished? To what end, and to whose benefit? If your actions speak of words, deeds, and beliefs that bestow riches and trust for humanity, you're on the right path. <laughs> and if for some reason, some strange reason, perhaps spending too much time north of 6th Street, you find yourself astray, you find yourself astray, I hope you all can remember the wise words of Henry Wadsworth Longfellow when he remarked that all are architects of faith, working in these walls of time, some with massive deeds and great, some with ornaments of rhyme. Nothing useless is or low, all things in its place is best, and what seems but idle show strengthens and supports the rest. Do what you can to make manifest the Pomona promise. You act in concert with the collective body of the Pomona College family. With all that said, I leave you all with one question. Will you keep your promise today? Will you keep our promise?